What's up, what's up, Derek here, Regatta Woodworking. And in this video, I made a mallet. Simple, uh, nothing really exciting. To me it is, because I get to use it in the shop. You know, cool tools, uh, and I made it myself. But I'm um, gonna show you this video on how I made this mallet. Uh, picked up a few tips and tricks of the videos I watched. It's the first time making a mallet. A um, little bit harder than what you think it is. A lot of little pieces. You got to get some angles right. I did screw up. I'm not going to lie. I'm honest with you guys. Um, why lie? You know, I learn every day. This is how we grow as uh, people. Um, angles, you know, cutting this wedge uh, groove in there to, so you can wedge in your handle to your mallet head. I uh, got that wrong, um, but I was able to make it work. We were able to fill it in. Um, it works good. It's solid. It's heavy. Uh, it's made with some purple heart, some walnut, and maple. Gave us some nice little edges. Um, nice, solid, heavy hammer. I like it. I feel like Thor now. Now I'm going to go build something, but we'll see. So stay tuned. Watch the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, I'm doing this for free. Um, I just like to share my stuff with the world uh, please subscribe show your love follow on facebook uh, check out the website i do sell products there and uh all the links are below follow me subscribe let's get on to the video i'm talking too much come on all right i found some scrap pieces of purple heart here we got some scrap walnut scrap maple we're gonna go ahead and utilize these to build our mallet um i'm gonna sandwich the purple heart i'm thinking with the walnut and might give it a nice little contrasting look right there so let's go ahead and cut this piece of walnut down get it matched up this is just a rough size right now we'll trim it down to size when it's all glued up together we're gonna go ahead and cut everything down to a rough dimension just so we glue it up uh, nothing's exact size right now we're gonna rip these down I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center of this piece of walnut here, and then we're gonna mark the center of the two halves here. All right, so I don't have a drill press, but I did pick up this drill press alignment guide thingamajiggy uh, from Milescraft. Seen some reviews on it, works pretty good. We're gonna try it out. Um, pretty much you hook your drill up to this and it keeps it aligned. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of walnut here and we're gonna end up cutting this in half and we're gonna drill two inch and three eight holes all the way through here. This is gonna be the center core of the mallet. Um, and I'll show you later why we're putting two holes and splitting this down the middle. Um, it'll make sense at the end. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up and see how it works. So we're gonna get our Inch and three eight Forsner bit in here. These bits are amazing. Attach a drill to the top, get it all lined up, and we're gonna start punching some holes in this. I'm gonna find the center. I don't have that many fancy tools, so <laughs> we're gonna use this, get a little two degree angle. This will be for the wedge insert. Mark it up. Now I am gonna cut this in half uh got a little ahead of myself the center core is too thick i just wanted about an inch wish i thought of this sooner would have helped me save time on the drilling these holes but not a big problem we'll go ahead and rip these down in half now i'm gonna go ahead and uh found some little spacers here just to help me line up on my line to get my little two degree angle. Yeah, I could have took it over to the miter saw. I don't know what I was thinking, just got lazy, I guess. Gonna go ahead and grab a piece of hard maple here, uh, rip it down about 16 inches in length. We're gonna cut it down about an inch and a quarter uh, squared. This will be for the handle. 
I got my crosscut sled set up. We're gonna lower the blade to about 3 16 of an inch and set up a little stop block. The depth, a little bit longer than the depth of the mallet head. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score the top of this handle all the way around. Then I'm gonna eat away at that 3 16 all the way up and down the top there. And this is gonna be the part that goes inside the mallet head and it'll leave a shoulder for the bottom of the handle to rest up against the bottom of the head. So we're gonna clean it all up here. The table saw, easy way to do it. All right, we got our pieces cut. I uh, got the center marked out on this piece of purple heart right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue these pieces down. And what we're gonna do is tack them down with the brad nailer so it'll give it some clamping pressure while we go to the next step. A little bit too much glue there. All right, so I got my lines here. I'm gonna line it up. Got my brand new one ready here. We're gonna go ahead and just shoot a couple in here. Kind of help hold it in place. And I'm only shooting it on only shooting it on this side because this is the side. Um, it's gonna have another piece on top here, so you won't see the the nails. Make sure we didn't punch through the other side. All right, so that's gonna hold it nice and tight there. Let's go ahead and get the glue out of the middle there. So I got my handle cut, trimmed this down. That's gonna come in here. We trimmed it down, so this is gonna be the shoulder of the handle that's gonna sit up against the bottom of the mallet. So I'm just gonna use this as my alignment here just so I can get these boards pushed together. Now it's gonna be a little bit of gap at the top because we did cut both of these at a two degree angle. Um, this center shaft right here will be split down the middle. That's where it'll be glued in and we'll have a wedge drove into there. So let's go ahead and just put some glue on this piece. Make sure we get all the, the entire surface here so we've got a good glute contact. Even though we're shooting a few brad nails in there, still want to make sure we have good glue contact. So I've got my angle there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the bottom corner tight with our handle there. And that's going to be... There, make sure you get it lined up nice and good. Go through there. Shoot a couple nails in here. Ooh, slipping on me. All right, so we got that nailed down. Let's go ahead and pull our handle out. That'll come in later. Uh, once again, let's get as much glue as you can out of the center here because once it's all done, you don't want anything obstructing your handle from going in. Clean this up a little bit. I'm working a little bit quick here because I do want to get this in clamps. So, I'll step on screen here. What we're going to do is, everybody's wondering, why did we drill two holes in here? Well, it's a mallet. You want some weight to it. Um, the purple heart is already heavy you know one that's got a little bit of weight to it but you want a good driving force so i got some steel bb's here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill these up and fill those little bb's try to get it up to the top um you don't want it to intrude on your 
um, your joint here. You know, the pieces of glue together. You don't want anything pushing up on it. So we got that pretty much up high. We're gonna go ahead and fill this side up. And it's not much weight you're adding, but it does make a difference. But I'm gonna have BBs all over the shop. Great. Got a slip and fall accident. Not sure if I could sue myself. Um, that was a little high. So that seems pretty good right there. So um, hopefully the camera's at a good spot, but we filled those up with the BBs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue up the other face of the mallet, the other piece of purple heart. Then we're gonna get it in some clamps. Um, sure all the pieces look like they're overlapping each other. Um, this is just cut down to a rough dimension right now, just so we can get all the parts and pieces put together. And then once it's all glued, dried, and out of clamps, we'll trim it down to its final size, get it all squared up, uh, profile the edges probably. We've got a stray BB. All right, so hopefully I got my clamps ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, stick this right on top, right on top, I can't speak today. Try to line it up with the purple heart that's on the bottom. And this is the tricky part here. So well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. Fold it over, make sure you don't lose the BBs. Try to do this one-handed. Let me get this one top here. Maybe I need a shop helper just to hold boards while I clamp. So I got ahead of myself and failed to bring some extra clamps over. So here we go, we can get this side up here. Want a good squeeze on it. If anything shifts a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Once again, we are gonna trim this thing down. Right now, it doesn't look like much. You're probably wondering what the hell is this guy doing? But don't worry, I say that to myself every day, but somehow it tends to work out. So you get a good squeeze on this. Um, if there's any gaps up top, you know, you don't, once you, we clean it up, you really don't want to see the seams between the two species of wood, but we can always fill those in with some dark CA glue. Um, this is not a fine piece of fine piece of furniture this is meant as a tool so we got it all squeezed up this side needs a little more so now we're just gonna I don't really have to worry too much about these pieces here because like I said we're gonna clean it up but I am going to show you a trick. You can get a mechanical pencil. Straws work great, but don't seem to have a straw on me right now. And you could hit your edges. I hope we got this angled right to the camera. Running right over your edge, trying to clean up that glob of glue that squeezes out before it dries. I'm going to get all four corners here and if you miss a spot not to worry um, there's other ways to get it out of there it just takes a little longer. I try to squeeze up some sandpaper and get your chisel in there. Um, when there's a will there's a way. We're going to go ahead and let this thing dry up and then we'll get on to the next step throwing in the handle trim it up like i said before i don't want to repeat myself too much but let's see how it 
how she goes. Probably gonna stick one more clamp in the middle here. Um, get a good squeeze on it. And we'll move on to the next part. All right, here I'm just gonna take my Japanese pull saw and mark the line down the center. We're gonna cut this about three quarters of the way down the bottom. This will be where the wedge slides in and it'll split those two upper sections and wedge up inside the mallet core. I'm gonna go over to router table, got my fence set up. Just gonna give it a little shaping on the edges. Nothing too fancy, just a little flare. And we're gonna go over to the joiner. Take off some of that excess, make a nice flat, smooth spot on one edge. And then take it over to the table saw, rest that up against the fence and trim down the other side just enough to give a nice flat spot. Make it all even. I wanna set up the cross cut sled. Trim down one edge to the final edge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my combination square and I'm gonna measure over to the handle opening to one edge and make that same mark on the other side so that we have an even distance from the edge of the mallet to the handle. Now I don't wanna keep it as just a rectangular block so Set my table saw up on a 45 degree angle and I'm just gonna slice off the edges here just a little bit. No specific measurement, just eyeballed it, set up the fence so it's even cut all the way around. Gives a nice little look to it. So once it was all done and cut, I noticed there was a few gaps in the joinery. Um, Could have had some of the BBs protruding a little bit, not letting a tight seal on the edges here. So what I am gonna use is some dark brown CA glue. It's a medium thick set and set it in there. Throw some accelerator on there and it'll dry up nice and quick so I can sand it down. Um, and notice a few more little spots here. So we're gonna to touch it up again, uh, spray it down. Just give it about 10, 15 seconds. It dries hard enough, you can start sanding it. So right now I'm on an 80 grit sandpaper just to rough it up, get it nice and smooth, um, quicker. Now we're gonna flip her over, do the same thing on the other side. Didn't have much on this side, just wanted to touch anything up and get a nice flat, seamless transition from one species to the next. Sand is down and then I went ahead and used my 80 grit and sanded every edge. Uh, all corners. I didn't record all of the sanding process, but I did the same process with all the grits. We went from an 80 grit, 120, 180, up to a 220 grit. Um, it is a process sanding, so I didn't film the whole thing. I did take my orbital sander and just took down the edges a little bit, all the way around. Could have used the bench top sander but once again, I was being lazy and didn't want to pull her out. So I just used my orbital, worked good, ate up the pad a little bit. I just wanted to soften up those edges. Don't need to cut yourself. That purple heart is pretty hard. I think it's pretty sharp. So we cut it down a little bit. Same process, went through all the grits. Went ahead and took the handle and I had some 80 and 120 uh, sandpaper there, so I just went ahead and hit that by hand. And then I had the 220 on the orbital sander, so I went ahead and just smooth her down. Like I said, this isn't a fine piece of, piece of furniture or something I'm gonna sell, so I'm just getting it good enough for myself. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and glue up, put a lot of glue up here on this portion of the handle. I don't even know what you call this portion, but it's going to slide up inside the mallet head. We're going to clean off some of the excess glue. Got my little walnut shim that I cut. Glue that up real good. Stick some glue inside the little slot we cut with the Japanese pull saw. And then we're going to beat it in. Wish I had my wooden mallet for this. But for the next one, I'll have it. So 
went ahead i couldn't see on the camera there but i was beating that wedge in trying to get a nice tight fit so now that the glue is all it's all glued up the wedge is in there i took my pulse hole again and just a uh, flush cut that portion that was sticking out the top there Now, like I mentioned before, I did miscalculate my angles. There was some small little gaps around where the wedge and the handle went up to the top. So once again, I used some of that heavy set dark brown CA glue, put some accelerator on there and started sanding it down again. Now, it took a little longer to sand because I still had my 220 grit on my orbital sander. So it took a lot longer to get it flattened out what I should have done was started back at the 80 and climbed up the grits again just so it wasn't as aggressive on the sandpaper you know with that CA glue but I got plenty of sandpaper so I just continued on sand it down All nice right, and guys. flat we uh, finished the mallet um, it's my first go around at a mallet we had a few imperfections in there um, messed up my angle for my wedge there but we was able to seal that up it's my first one it's not too bad i'm happy with it it does work it's got some weight to it um, so what we're gonna do is picked up some tongue oil we're gonna give this a nice wipe down let it sit see how that finish comes out it should make the color pop on it and we'll give it a go so i got some clean Shop rags here. Fold some up here. Gotta shake the tongue oil real good. Let's make the color pop real nice. Enhances the purple heart a lot. Get good coverage on there. Supposed to let it kind of sit on there for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then you buff it out with a fresh rag. And then after that, let it sit 24 hours and reapply as necessary more coats will just give a little extra sheen to it make sure we get all these grooves Alright, we've been sitting for about 
15, 20 minutes. You see the tongue oil glossed on there. What we're gonna do, I'm just gonna take a clean rag, kind of just buff it out. Trying to get the excess off of it. Probably just gonna leave it at one coat. This hand over here. I'm gonna leave it at one coat for now. It's just gonna be a shop hammer. Um, but if you wanted to use it up for display or for something other than working, uh, naturally you can give it two or three coats. Uh, preferably wait about 24 hours and that'll really enhance the sheen on it make sure we get all the edges here the tongue oil actually feels a little sticky as it's drying but as i buff it out it gets rid of all that there's a nice little sheen nothing too crazy she goes you really see the highlights in the purple heart and in the walnut really like how that came out the tongue oil really enhanced the walnut um, maple doesn't look half bad itself either um, I'm happy with it got some good weight That's the mallet. We'll get better at them. We'll make some more. Um, probably add some features, some engraving on future ones. Uh, maybe some different design heads on it. Uh, we will get better at the wedge portion and getting that angle correct. But like I said, this is for me to use. We all make mistakes. Just move forward and keep going at it. So this thing is done. So on to the next project.